smears and, and things like that. What, what do we all think about that? No, I read, I can't remember where it was this morning, I read something that was saying, and it was um, looking at whether it's the, it's because, and it might have even been on your page, Rachel, it, whether it's about because it's an invasive procedure or whether it's because it's just uh, embarrassment because of the genitals or whether it's because of fear of finding out a result that you don't want. And there was a bit of a survey done and it was really mixed reviews in the survey results as to the reasons why people were reluctant to say, go for um, smear tests. Um, as, uh, it just that was the one it was looking at in particular and I, I really I just really don't know what the answer is as to why it has become um, a taboo I suppose over in years ago you never women never talked about anything did they historically mm -hmm. when we look at how oppressed um, mm. people have been I think definitely it's becoming more of um, uh, sex in general and uh, it's becoming more of a um, an easier topic that people are having um, and with things like you say, social media, it's given a platform now for people to be able to talk about some of these issues that before they haven't wanted to. But I've looked on the social media sites of some of those authors, I've said, when they launched their books like Period and Vagina Bibles. And some of the trolling and the views they got off people saying like, it's disgusting, you shouldn't talk about this. It's, it's unbelievable. You think it's, it's a natural part of Yeah, it's like biology. Life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'd be pretty I screwed think... without it, wouldn't we? That's the thing. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Come on, guys. I think also, sorry, with, I think also when you say about why don't we talk about it, I think it starts also with, with your children and how you talk to them about it, I suppose, because like you were saying, Claire, you saying you're trying to get the girls to say just vagina because that's what it is, instead of like um your flower or your whatever, <laughs> all these names. But that if you say if you, if I suppose if you're saying to your, your kids, um you know, your privates or, you know, rather than just saying what it is, that's already putting us a bit of a taboo on it, isn't it? You're like, we shouldn't really say the actual word, but why not? Mm. Um, and then also with periods as well, I don't know if, if you've done this, Claire, but I mine a couple of times when they were younger and they had the seat when, you know, when they come in the cubicle and they saw the blood and they're like, why oh, are you bleeding and all this? And I just said, and I just told them straight away what it was and what it happens and they just don't think anything of it. But I remember my mum saying, oh, I'll tell you when you're older, don't worry, that's not my blood. And like, and I thought, that's probably already again a bit to be right. it. Yeah. So then by the time they are older and it does happen, oh, we don't talk about it. So I suppose being open about everything um, and using the right terminology and things when kids are young is probably quite important, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I remember. Sorry, go on, Claire. So, uh, Amelia is, as I say, she's in, going into year six in September. And this year in her class, they had the little talk about periods and stuff, but they have a little basket in the classroom that's got sanitary products in that if any of them need to take and use, it's, it's there to just go. Um, that's which, good. We never had anything like that in school. Like, we, we had the vending machine, but we you never had any money to go and get one and you ran out. Vendor. And then it was them horrible big fat things that you were just like, well, I can't do anything with that. We have a basket in the studio as well of like just loads of sanitary towels and like tampons just saying, Yeah, I know it's that one. I'll see you. Yeah. This is nothing worse, is that? Because you don't, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, this was embarrassing for me, but it just shows like what we have to go through. I was training um, years ago, I was training a guy in the gym um, at a corporate company. <laughs> Claire's laughing because she knows this. And, um, <laughs> and I was demonstrating something, and I had like grey leggings on, so you know what like the like if you get any wet or piss on them or anything. And um, I did something like a squat, a wide squat mm -hmm. or something, and I caught sight back of me in the mirror, and I was like, and it was like a big dark patch on the pants, and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, and I literally went, sorry, I feel a bit sick, and ran to the toilet. And I'd come on, I, I knew I was on my period, I had a tampon, heavy tampon in, but at the time I was going through a period where they were really, really heavy. And um, it just like soaked through the tampon within like half an hour or whatever. And it was, I had to feel, felt it coming out, but it, it was everywhere. It was all over my pants. I didn't have a jacket with me to tie around the way. Around. Like I was like, oh my God. So I literally had to grab my bag and like kind of hold it at the back of me and run and I just went home, I ran home and then I texted the guy saying, really sorry, I've been sick, 
and would have to go. God knows if he'd seen it or whatever. And because it, it, I don't know how long it had been there. And I thought, oh, and there's so many times that that's happened. Like not yeah. when I used to have really heavy periods. And Claire did the same <laughs> thing during the exam. Like we were taking a, a, mas a master's exam at the time when Claire did the same, and she was like, but I leave the room, yeah. <laughs> I just finished my exam early. <laughs> yeah, and I saw exam sitting on a coat. <laughs> it's just, it is bad because you can't say, well, you should be able to say, but you can't say, can I just go because this? Yeah. It's just... But I think it just need it just needs to be vocalised more, doesn't it? So that it doesn't become a, oh, what, you know, feeling ashamed or feeling embarrassed. It should just be something that you could just explain what had happened and, and no one would bat an eyelid at it. I think yeah. I, I did... Um, the show the vagina monologues i don't know if any of you have seen oh, it the, yeah. the stage that show a few years ago and it was absolutely fantastic for like raising awareness and for talking and but what i found really fascinating was that the, the biggest reaction that the audience gave every night was just to use like you say saying the word vagina like the second you said the word vagina everyone started laughing and it was like it was like this ripple effect, although we had a section where we went through like all different names that people use, like Mary Ann Foo Foo and Nunu and whatever. <laughs> and the, all these names that we, kept, we came up with and remembered or heard. And again, it was just, it's just so random that that was so, so strange in, in such, uh, you know, in this day and age, that that can cause such a response. And, and actually by doing something like that, again, just talking and just making it like, really normalizing it i guess yeah, it um was good and we had a girl i've had a girl message me saying um she was really pleased that we were talking about this subject because she was 33 and she'd had a hysterectomy already and i think you know again it's just stuff that you, you don't ever think do you oh, that that won't happen to me or you know i won't have to experience that or and then and then you you know things happen and you do and actually to be educated on those things would make any scenario a, a, a little bit less daunting and, and less scary. Do you, do you agree? Yeah, definitely. Robin and I, have, um, <clears throat> we've been in delivered training to a couple of corporate places. Um, uh, all two have a women's network. And we went to a place um, down south somewhere where they had um, wanted to put on some menopause awareness training because they said that they had a workforce of um, women that were had raised issues around um, the workplace wasn't supportive enough for either perimenopause or postmenopause around things just like they they'd put in some train they'd put in some little things like they'd put desk fans they'd offer desk fans to people so that if anybody was like particularly feeling really hot they had a desk fan without having to open the window which made the office colder which then put somebody yeah. else off in the office and caused an issue and different yeah. things. And they just put little strategies in place with them. So we went in to do some work with them just around understanding some of the um, symptoms of menopause, perimenopause, some things that you can do to manage the symptoms. And again, trying to just demystify like the, the myths and the taboos that everybody's like, like with the period, the, the thing that you're going to be a moody cow when you're on your period or you're going yeah. to be angry, crazy, hormonal woman when you're menopausal. You, you might be, but you also might not be. Mm. And um just these, these assumptions and stereotypes that um, have come up. And so it was really good to see some of these companies being really proactive in having these as staff development sessions. And we, we met a couple of women on these that were only in the early 30s that were um, experiencing early menopause. And they said it was really, really useful for them to just find out some information because they said that you kind of, with early menopause, their experience was no one, everyone's older, like in their 50s or their 40s. Or they found it really hard being able to connect with somebody a similar age to them in the early 30s that was going through early menopause. And they said mm. they'd struggled to find anywhere to reach out for support. Yeah. I think, it's, I think that's becoming more common as well now with women experience like, um, experiencing early menopause symptoms or... Um, issues with the periods because we're in like the modern day living for women is is very stressful and I think a lot of women are chronically stressed and then that obviously affects the hormones and then that has a knock-on effect with periods and menopause and things like that so I think it's becoming more common so that's it's good that we're talking about it at the moment and trying to run your you're doing things like this to raise awareness is really good there's also the um 
have you seen the smear for smear campaign that they do every year i've got involved with that a couple of times yeah, lipstick one. where you smear your lipstick yeah, yeah um just to raise awareness and even like last time i went i was obviously bringing talking about smears again but last time i went for a smear i just put on a little video go look i've just had my smear there was nothing to be scared of it's really quick it's really simple da, da, da. and i got a massive response from that because a lot of girls are just like oh my gosh thanks for sharing that or you know, I, I always get really scared or, you know, it's great to, to talk about it and to encourage younger girls to go or, or women just in general. Because I think a lot, again, a lot of women are scared, aren't they? But did you find, um, Rachel, obviously, because you said that it's, has it been a, a year since you've kind of started going through whatever you've been going through? Have you found that the, the more you've kind of had appointments and things, the less daunting it's got? Because you're obviously getting more educated yourself and you said the hospital have been great. Yeah, yeah, it's it's been like um, an ongoing process uh, that hopefully is coming to the end of our last scan in July. Um, but yeah, I think that obviously the more you do it, the less daunting it gets, um, and and the more you talk about it, the more comfortable you start to feel. Um, and that's one thing I would say to a lot of people is is just talk is talk about it, even if you it's to your family or if you have symptoms and you don't feel comfortable going to the doctors, just talk about it with your with anyone first and then they might encourage you to then go to your GP or to the to a gynecologist and it's like important to remember that it's always a hundred percent private and obviously yeah. they're professionals so there's nothing to be worried about or embarrassed about because I think a lot of things I think it's like shame almost or like you feel embarrassed that your pubic hair's not right or you know it's, it's, it looks different to everyone else's and one thing I've learned is um, that there are no two vulvas that are the same everyone's different and it's a bit like we never ever really see any other women's bodily parts um, and there's a good book actually by Laura Dodsworth where she photographed, it's called Womanhood and she photographed a hundred ladies parts, uh, the correct terminology is a vulva. Yeah. Um, and I just think it's really inspiring and it's, it gives women confidence, like just to see other people's parts to think, oh actually every single one of them look different so mine actually looks okay. Yeah. Because we're all we're we're all different. I mean, we're all different body shapes, so it makes sense that our everything about our body is going to look different. It's not like one cut from one template, is it? So I think, yeah, I saw something about that. Or I saw something where some body parts and uh, vulvas have been molded, like body casts. Oh I yeah, I yeah, that on something, that. and it was fascinating because you do go, oh my god, <laughs> we're all so different. And I think it's really important, like you say that. See, doctors and nurses and, and the people that do these procedures are seeing these things day in, day out. I think, I think it makes a big difference when you have a baby, don't, doesn't it? I mean, it did for me, that you go for all these appointments and to begin with, you're a bit like, oh, okay, uh, it's a bit embarrassing. And then by the end of it, you're like, yeah, go on, crack on with it. <laughs> you're just not oh, ashamed yeah. anymore because you're just like, well, you've seen it. You, they don't bat an eyelid. You're just doing the job. And, you know, it's just another, another another body another human isn't it yeah I read something really I can't remember where I read it I might have been in that vagina but I'm not sure but it was a gynecologist um talking about smear tests or talking about getting checked out and she was saying please don't please don't get all fancy dressed for me you don't have to shave you don't have to put your best socks on and all this and she told a really funny story and I just so remember, just reminded me and made me laugh then she was saying that one time this, this girl came in and she switched the light on. As soon as she switched the light on, she just said that it was like a vagina was like a glitter ball. And she was like, what? She was like, it's very sparkly. And then she started laughing and it broke the eyes. And basically the girl had sprayed some like nice smelling body spray on her thighs and stuff. So just to make sure it was all nice. But she'd not realised she'd picked up one that she said had a shimmer in it. So when the light came on, it was just like, ding. And this guy was just like, well, that's broken the ice. But she, it just reminded me of it then. It's part we, do the know, China. we do like making sure everything's perfect before going. No, I do when I get. <laughs> The worst one I get, and I like quite a lot. Get <laughs> if I go for like a smear test, or like I say, I've had to go for biopsies and things. I get the um, 
Either you look like the girl of Hollyoaks, literally why I'm there with, with like, like